Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today I will be doing a plan with me video in my Erin uh, Condren Vertical Life Planner. Um, today, since it is December, I thought I would talk about some Christmas movies that have been released on Netflix. So today I will be talking about my thoughts on Falling for Christmas. Uh, it's a new um, release on uh Netflix and it involves Lindsay Lohan so it's kind of Lindsay Lohan's comeback um so I thought while I was putting down the spread I would talk about the movie um today I will be using a kit from the Prairie Planner so if you didn't already know I actually PR for the Prairie Planner um so you can use my code Ashley20 to pick up uh any to get 20% off your order and pick up my uh December freebie um, which is right here. Uh, so it's New Year's themed. And so I'll be putting down um, some of the, I've already partly used the kit, but um, from the kit Hot Cocoa, as well as some foil from their Christmas foil bundle in red foil. Uh, so as I lay down the spread, I'll kind of get into my thoughts on the movie. Okay, so overboard is or sorry falling for christmas wow i've already called it my point was it's basically overboard um if you haven't seen overboard it's a movie with goldie hawn uh and kurt russell in which a rich mean person uh falls overboard and has amnesia and kurt russell convinces her that she's his wife and through living together she learns the true joys of life to i don't know be nicer have a family and falls in love um but of course it's kind of problematic because the whole premise of the movie and their whole love thing is the fact that kurt russell tricked her into thinking that they were married to begin with so um problematic plot i think falling for christmas does a better job of it though um so the uh i already forget all the characters names uh but Co i think his name's in real life cord overstreet if that's right i don't know but yes cord overstreet essentially um is the uh love interest of Lindsay lohan's character um, and basically he, uh, he, I guess is better and less problematic in that he didn't really know Lindsay Lohan's character beforehand, although they did have like a meet cute, but I'm assuming, I don't know, it didn't really make sense having that point because it seemed like from the rest of the movie, he didn't know her. Anyways, so there's that point, but he didn't actually know her. He was just trying to help her out and give her a place to stay because she didn't know um, exactly where she was from, where she lived, who her family was, who she was. So, you know, it was out of the kindness of his heart. There's also a plot point in the movie where uh, Cord and Lohan almost kiss, but Cord says no because it's not right because she has amnesia. So, better in that sense, but um still kind of heavily influenced from it i actually thought it was kind of a cool plot point in the sense of it offered a bit more of a mix-up from like traditional like hallmark christmas movies um i've seen a lot of reviews from like just online from people talking about how boring the movie was and how cheesy the movie was and you are right, but I feel like out of all the Hallmark movies, it's actually pretty okay. Like, I actually kind of enjoyed it for, like, what it is, which is a cheesy Hallmark movie. And so I thought the plot was a little bit more original because I feel like every Hallmark movie is basically a... Uh, uh, woman who is heavily career focused and doesn't understand the true meaning of Christmas and the true meaning of Christmas is having a family and taking care of a family and being loved by a man and 
yeah, I just, I don't know, it's very cliche. Also kind of problematic. Not that this was fully unproblematic, but I kind of liked how the focus was instead on her. It wasn't necessarily about love. I felt like it was more about, like the love felt like a side plot in, a mov in the movie. Um, it was morally about saving his in and for her to kind of stop, like focus on something other than being rich and um, I don't know. So I, th I, I enjoyed the plot a bit more. Um, I actually really liked, even though the act, like, I enjoyed, uh, Tad, Tad I think was his name, side plot story. I thought it, like, it was very cheesy again. Um, and Tad as an actor, I thought his character, he overacted, his character was a bit of a character, but I thought it kind of broke up the romance and so it felt more than just like a romance movie. Um, so I like that part of it. Um, I, in terms of everyone else's acting, it wasn't bad for a Hallmark movie. I thought the, I mean, the little girls was pretty, pretty bad, pretty Disney Channel, but, um, she's a kid. I thought actually Lindsay Lohan was the best and kind of the most realistic out of the cast. I was so glad. Um, I don't know, just to see her in this role. And kind of, even though it is a cheesy Netflix movie, just see her excel at it. Like, I thought she made the character more realistic, in a sense. Like, the rich girl act could have been way more over the top, could have become a character. And I thought she did an excellent job of, like, kind of balancing that. So, props to Lindsay Lohan. Um, I thought she was my favorite part of the movie. Um, I also really like the ending of the movie. Um, so the ending of the movie, I guess spoilers if you haven't seen it, but I mean, if you've watched this far, I'm guessing you don't care about spoilers. Probably gonna use some weight out. Um, so the ending of the movie ends with, uh, cause the whole plot is like, Court Overstreet's gonna lose the his business, which is a ski lodge, a small ski lodge. And the beginning of the movie starts with him actually talking to Lindsay Lohan's da dad and pitching the ski lodge. And I thought, so I thought where the movie was going was, oh, they'll fall in love and it's okay because her dad will save it. But that's not really how it went. Instead, it was Lindsay Lohan helped him plan a uh plan like an event and everyone like in the community came back and helped give back to the uh to the um resort the ski resort um but he still said it wasn't enough but once Lindsay Lohan got her memory back she actually it was like in a press conference she mentioned the kindness of Cord Overstreet taking her in and helping her through this time and I thought that was kind of a nicer ending because I think it kind of spoke to like the nice nar uh, nature of the character and not just him getting lucky for meeting a girl who's rich but through his kindness it kind of paid off and helped save his business so I don't know I like that aspect of the ending um, and I guess also just in terms of the story, like I didn't really care for the romance. I don't know, I'm not usually a romance person anyways, like usually I watch these movies because they're bad and I like watching bad movies. And so um, I didn't really think their chemistry, like it was never really a thought. I saw a lot of people online talk about how horrible their chemistry was. I didn't think it was horrible, I just didn't think it was, like that's not why I was watching it. Um. And so I guess the romance wasn't strong, like if you're big into romance, according to other people's. I didn't think it was horrible, but it definitely wasn't, I guess, the, um, what brought me into the movie and what I liked about the movie. I liked it kind of for the side story. 
um, and for its cheesiness. And so, if you're definitely into romance, this movie might not be for you. Um, but if you, I would say still give it a go if you like kind of cheesy, hallmarky Christmas movies, because I found this to be kind of the better of those types of movies. Um, and yeah, I just, I don't know, I, I like that really, instead of the romance, like the romance, like I said, felt like a side plot to me. And really, the movie instead focused on, like, Lindsay Lohan's character development. And yes, it was partly due to love. But I felt like it was a bit more than that. Um, so, I'll say that on that. Um, I will say, like, I think I've already mentioned this, just how exciting it was to see Lindsay Lohan back again. And back strong. I wasn't sure, like, after all this time, like, how her acting skills would be but I thought they were pretty strong for the fact that she has not acted in a long time or at least from what I've seen um and has been kind of out of the public eye um and I just I loved all the mean girl references not all I don't know it might it might be unintentional, but I feel like it was definitely done on purpose. There are some refer like references to Mean Girls, um, one being where she sang Jingle Bell Rock. Another, uh, I think it's Tad. I keep wanting to say Thad. Tad, who uh, mentioned that he like pulled up a cider and he said something. I'm gonna get this wrong, but I think it was something like gondolas are for losers. Hop in, and I don't know. It just it brought back a lot of flashbacks to Mean Girls. Um, I think it would have actually, what would have taken the movie to the next level is if they had her, uh, Lindsay Lohan narrate the movie instead. I think that would have made the references even stronger. Um, and so anyways, I thought she did a fantastic job in this. This movie though, it also reminded me while I was thinking about it, is who I kind of want to see like back again is Amanda Bynes. And just because there's like a lot of physical comedy in this movie, and I felt like Amanda Bynes like really, and especially at such a young age, was able to kind of nail the physical comedy. And so I thought like this type of movie honestly would have been perfect for her because she knows how to like make physical comedy more natural just with like her facial expressions and not feel completely like cheesy. And so I think it'd be great also to see Amanda Bynes back into a movie like this. I, though talking about this stuff, feel extremely old because, uh, you know, I saw Lindsay Lohan back, you know, when she was doing, like, those cheesy movies on, like, Disney Channel. And Cord was on Glee, but not even the earlier seasons of Glee, which was on when I was in high school. And so I feel very old watching them play 30-year-olds, 40-year-olds. I mean, his daughter was, like probably a preteen so I don't know how old they're supposed to be but it definitely made me feel old watching this um but it was it was nice um so yes if you are looking for a kind of cute cheesy movie I definitely recommend this um it'll definitely kind of Especially if you're into those like Hallmark Christmas movies, I feel like this will be a really good fit. Um, but if this is like if Hallmark cheesy Christmas movies are not your bit, I'm not sure how much you'll enjoy it. Um, I feel like you still might. Like actually, my partner hates those movies, and he would glance over occasionally and watch the movie. He was like pretty into it, so you might. Um, but yeah, it's definitely it's definitely. It's definitely cheesy, but I thought out of the Hallmark movies, it was the best. I will say, though, the only thing that kind of really bothered me about, not the movie, but actually looking at reviews, was how many reviews 
focused on her looks. All right, so I think I just left off. I was talking about my last thoughts about the movie. Um, and I think I'll kind of wrap it up there. Um, so for, I'll just talk about kind of my plans for Christmas. Um, so I'm hoping to do for the other um, plan with me is for the month of December. I'm hoping to do this again. So I think I'm going to be watching two more movies. Um, one is uh, The Knoll Diaries, I think. I think that's what it's called. I think it's called The Knoll Diaries. It's with the guy from um, uh, This Is Us. And so it looks incredibly boring. Um, and, but the, um, the trailer led, like, the plot points were going to be quite weird and interesting. I don't know. I'll wait to give my kind of thoughts on from the trailer. But, um, once I actually see the movie, but yeah, I'm thinking I will do that movie as well as the new, uh, Freddie Prince Jr. movie. Um, I think it's called Falling For You. Both are on Netflix, um, so if you want to give them a watch beforehand, I will probably be watching them over kind of the next two weeks as I plan and give my thoughts on them. Um, if you have any thoughts, though, on uh, Falling for Christmas, please uh, leave them down in the comments. I'd love to talk about the movie a bit more. Um, I honestly thought it was pretty fun for a Christmas movie, so I'm excited to think, see what others think um about it and so now I'm just kind of laying the day by day um so I've laid down Monday here I can also kind of give updates where I'm getting these stickers from so we have sticker party paper shire once more with love the prairie planner green darner designs I think I said this was a sticker party it's not it's alley cat shop uh coffee monsters co rabbit I always say this wrong rabbit hole handcraft and green darner designs And then here on Wednesday, we have uh, Stick With The Plan Co. I think this is Krell's Creations, but I feel like I got it so long ago, I can barely remember. And then we have Paper Shire here. Two co-workers. And then this cute little zombie work sticker from Prairie Planner. And Thursday, we again have uh, Green Darner Designs. Um, and then Paper Shire, Paper Shire, and the Prairie Planner down here. And I guess I can talk about how I think this movie rates to other movies. Um, well, I guess other Christmas movie, it is not like, you know, a Steven Spielberg for a film. Um, but I feel like for a Christmas movie, I give it like a solid 6.5. Um, it was entertaining and it was cheesy. Um, the effects and acting weren't great, especially the effects for like the downhill skiing. Um, and like some of the it felt like it was a lot that I felt like more could have been kind of drawn out and cut out. Um, but overall, I thought it was kind of cute and funny. I'm having trouble laying this on straight, but I'm wondering if it's not a straight sticker. There we go. And these are cute from um, Planner Monkey Co. They're actually cute Mean Girl stickers. And I feel like it kind of goes with the uh, whole theme of the spread. So yeah, ultimately, I... I really enjoyed the movie. I think I give it a solid like 6.5. Um, I I think it's a good like 
cheesy Christmas movie. Um, I think the other ones, my predictions are going to rate much lower, um, but we'll see how I feel about them. So yeah, in my upcoming weeks, I will kind of film, um, watch those two movies and film plan with me. Um, feel free to watch them as well and leave comments. Um, and if you have any thoughts about falling for Christmas, feel free to leave a comment down below. Um, and I hope you enjoy my video. If you like it, you can give the video a like. Uh, you can also subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you so much for watching. Um, and also follow me on Instagram to see how the finished spread looks.